All right, a uh, little bit of a, an apology. The last video is kind of long. It's over 50 minutes long. I didn't realize that I did both uh, uh, section 19.4, work in th thermodynamic processes, and section 19.5, the first law of th thermodynamics. I didn't do it. Uh, I did it all together. I did both of them together. I'm usually used to uh, these sections ending with a little quick quiz. Well, the quick quiz didn't occur till uh, after the... Uh, 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 the end of section 19.5. So uh, you got two sections for the price of one. Sorry, it was a little long, uh, but we're starting uh, uh, section 19.6, energy transfer mechanisms and thermal processes. And we're gonna start with uh, thermal conduction. Um, the, let me put the, uh, uh, minimize this so that there's no uh, interference with the, the text. Um, so uh, uh, the process of energy transfer by heat can also be called conduction or thermal conduction. Uh, this is a process, I mean, if, if you were to take a steel rod and you were put it, to put it over a fire, um, eventually you would feel uh, uh, the heat would get to your hand. Uh, what's happening? Well, the, the, the uh, molecules that make up the, the steel rod, the, the metal rod, uh, as they're in, as they get agitated, their um, their vibration around their quiescent point uh, increases, and so uh, as they vibrate, they vibrate their their uh, neighboring molecules, and that vibration just works down uh, the entire rod until uh, your, your your hand uh, uh, begins to feel the heat. Uh, it's not immediate. There's a, a time lag in the, the transfer of the, uh, the heat energy, but it, uh, you will eventually feel it. Um, and, and you have uh, good conductors and you have insulators. Uh, you, the asbestos, um, it, the asbestos is, a, is a good insulator. Now it's you know, dangerous. They don't like uh, finding asbestos in buildings anymore, but it is, it does make for a good insulator. Um, so the, the, the rate of thermal conduction through a material uh, depends on the properties of the material. Uh, um, so the, and the good conductors are metals. The metals are good thermal conductors because they contain a large, no, large numbers of electrons that are relatively free to move through the metal and so can transport energy over large distances. Uh, therefore, in a good conductor such as copper, the conduction takes place by means of both the vibration of atoms and the motion of free electrons. Um, so uh, we'll see that they, uh, that presence of free electrons also makes uh, for good electrical conductors. We'll come upon that in um, uh, chapter 26, but we're not, uh, we're not there yet. Right now, we're, we're just talking about thermal conduction. Okay, let's take a, a, a slab of area A um, uh, and um, uh, a thickness L and it has a, uh, here's a, on this side is a uh, temperature cold, here's a temperature hot, and the energy is going, uh, of course, the hot temperature is greater than the cold temperature. There's, the energy is gonna transfer from the hot side to the cold side. Uh, the opposite faces are at different temperatures where T hot is greater than T cold. And the uh, equation for the, the, um, uh, the, heat transfer, uh, Q is equal to Ka uh, delta T over delta X uh, delta T, where the capital delta T is the thermal difference. Um, delta T is the time. Delta X is the, the, uh, um, the transfer. And of course, uh, A is the area and K is a coefficient. Um, the uh, uh, it, it's this thermal conductivity coefficient, and hopefully they'll, uh, uh, okay, uh, before we get there, we'll, we'll look at this, the P, the P is the power, um, it, it, it's, uh, power is equal to Ka uh, dt dx. Um, let's see, here, here's our, our table of thermal conductivities, and you'll see that the, the metals, are uh, 
are very good conductors. Uh, the, the best one here is silver, 427 uh, watts. Uh, per meter per degree uh, Celsius. Uh, I almost said centigrade, that's an old term. Uh, you can see that uh, copper is very good, 397 watts per meter per degree uh, Celsius. Um, you can see iron uh, and lead, lead is, is a poor conductor. I mean, it's, it's, uh, I mean, it will conduct, but it, uh, uh, it's very slow, 34.7 watts per meter per degree C. Uh, and you can see most of non-metals uh, are, are, uh, have very low thermal conductivities, except for diamond. Diamond uh, 2,300, uh, glass is 0.8, asbestos is 0.08, wood is 0.08, uh, and gases. Gases are, have low thermal conductivities also, uh, air, helium, hydrogen, uh, the greatest of those is hydrogen in 0 0.172. Uh, I do an example of the thermal uh, conductivity of concrete. And let's see, concrete, uh, yeah, this is 0 0.8. Oops, um, 0 0.8. Okay, let's, uh, 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 you can see here that there's a, there's a uh, this rod here of length L is uh, be suspended between a, um, a cold um, uh, a cold bath, whether it's submerged in ice or whatever. And then here there's it's something hot and the energy transfers um, along the rod. The, the dark gray is the insulation. The opposite ends of the rod are in thermal contact uh, with energy reservoirs at different temperatures. Uh, so dt, uh, dx is equal to the uh, difference of t hot minus t cold over the length. Um, and the p is equal to ka, th minus tc over l, where again, k is the thermal conductivity, a is the area. Um, so the p, the power is equal to the area times the uh, delta t over the sum of LIKIs, where that this is when you have different materials. Um, uh, okay, so let's look at uh, uh, a little quiz here. Uh, you have two rods of the same length and diameter, the same diameter, but they are formed from different materials. The rods are used to connect two regions at different temperatures so that energy transfers from the rods by heat. They can be connected in series as the top figure or in parallel as in the bottom figure figure. In which case is the rate of energy transfer by heat larger? Uh, well, the, if they both have the same diameter, um, you can see that, that the configuration B, you've basically doubled the area uh, that, they, that they transfer. And you can see that the area is indeed a, uh, from these equations, that the area is indeed uh, a factor, it's directly proportional to the area, inversely proportional to the length. Uh, so if you increase the area, um, the parallel configuration would be the, uh, uh, the rate of transfer uh, is larger for that configuration. Okay, home insulation, we have some R values. Now the R values, notice they're in, they're, they're in, uh, um, they're not in scientific uh, terms. The R value is uh, square feet, uh, degree Fahrenheit. Uh, I think that's hour uh, per BTU, British Thermal Unit. Um, and you can see that uh, fiberglass insulation, uh, six inch thick is 18.8. Uh, that's a high um, insulating value. Uh, very low is the, the um, uh, stagnant air layer. And that, that's the, the little layer uh, that, that's on the surface. Um, and let's see, what else is very low? It looks like the, uh, uh, that's the lowest, but uh, drywall is 0.45. Uh, so it's not a very good insulator. Uh, wood shingles and hardwood siding there, they don't fare much better, but fiberglass is a six inch fiberglass insulation is the best. Um, and uh, so we can replace the, the, uh, the sigma for, uh, 
L, Li over Ki for the R value. Uh, I'm not going to dwell too much on that. Uh, convection. Uh, let's say you have a toaster and you're toasting some bread. If you if you um, put your hands over the toaster, you'll feel the warm air molecules coming off the uh, uh, the heating elements. That is the the um, that is uh, transferred by uh, convection, and it is a uh, it is a, a transfer by uh, uh, um, by matter transfer. Uh, I'm losing my uh, pages here. That's why I'm stumbling. Um, let's see, convection. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, so, and, and if you if you add a fan, that's called force convection. Uh, that's some of these what you call convection ovens. They they put a fan in it to force the circulation of the hot air. Um, okay. Uh, uh, so so. Um, the, you know, as you heat, as the heating element in the toaster heats the air, you changing density and it becomes less dense and it rises. Uh, so this process is referred to natural convection. And when you put a fan in it, that's forced convection. Okay, let's, uh, radiation. Uh, radiation is, is a means of energy transfer. It's electromagnetic radiation. T, that's the T-E-R uh, in the, that first equation I gave you in the last uh, lecture. Um, uh, so it, it's, a, uh, it's a form of, uh, of heat transfer radiation. And the power here is equal to uh, sigma A um, uh, E uh, to the t temperature to the fourth. Uh, this is Stefan's law. Um, P is the power in watts. Uh, sigma is a constant equal to uh, 5.6696 times 10 to the minus eighth watts per meter squared per Kelvin to the fourth. And A is the surface area of the object in uh, square meters. E is the emissivity. Um, and T is the uh, surface temperature in Kelvins. Uh, the emissivity can vary between zero and one depending on the properties of the surface of the object. Uh, the emissivity is equal to the absorptivity, of, which is the fraction of the incoming radiation that the surface absorbs. Uh, a mirror has very low absorptivity because it reflects almost all of the incident light. Um, uh, so the, the, a mirror surface has very low emissivity. Uh, on the other end of the spectrum is an ideal absorber that we call a black body, that it absorbs all of the uh, uh, the radiation. Um, so that's, if you, if you have a black body, uh, it has an emissivity of one. Um, so uh, uh, just to give you an idea of, of radiation, every second approximately 1,370 joules of electromagnetic radiation from the sun passes perpend perpendicularly through each square meter at the top of the Earth's atmosphere. Uh, the radiation is primarily visible, infrared and ultraviolet. We'll get to infrared and ultraviolet when we get to uh, electromagnetic waves. Um, so uh, that's in chapter 33. Uh, so let's see, uh, you know, these are solar panels. You know, the, I talked about the uh, 1,370 joules of electromagnetic radiation uh, hitting the, uh, 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 a square meter, every square meter. So there's a lot of um, harvesting with the, the solar panels. Um, let's see, I think I gave you that uh, uh, P net is equal to the uh, uh, sigma area emissivity times t, uh, t to the fourth minus uh, T zero to the fourth, where T zero I think is the ambient, um, the, uh, the surrounding, uh, average temperature is T zero. Uh, so uh, let's see. Uh, uh, we'll we'll skip this. They're just uh, talking about that initial. Um, the initial. Uh, it's in your book. Uh, I forget what page. It's. I'm not going to dwell on that. Uh, the Dewar flask. We used to use. Uh, uh, at Southwest Research, we had. Uh, uh, we use liquid nitrogen quite a bit, and it was a large door. It was on wheels. Uh, I've got a video of, of uh, 
the uh, uh, liquid nitrogen dewar releasing uh, some uh, uh, some pressure, uh, pretty impressive. Uh, any, anyway, the, you have uh, uh, um, you can see that there's there's the uh, this is a glass uh, glass flask here, um, and it's silvered. It's silvered, silver uh, lining. Uh, uh, the silvered surface has a very low emissivity, so it reflects all of the energy back. I mean, you wouldn't want to make it black because then it would absorb all the energy. There's a vacuum in this uh, um, in this vacuum in this this area here it has a vacuum uh so it uh um it it uh very little um uh very little uh there'll be very little thermal transfer uh between the inside and the outside and it'll keep it'll keep things uh if you have a thermos you know that it it keeps uh, uh your hot things hot or your cold things cold um so uh and that's a doer flask. And I think that's the end of the uh, uh, this section. And uh, so we'll end it here. That's the end of this chapter.